Okay, good morning everyone. My name is Karen. I'm the representative of the Yanoi Town Echo Park Plastic Resources Recycling Center. I'm here today to introduce you our center. Uh, our center is funded by the Environment, Environment and Conservation Fund and it is under the Environment Protection Department of the Hong Kong government. So, uh, have anyone have heard about our center? Please raise up your hand. Anyone that never heard about our center, please raise your hand. Okay, um, let's talk about Yenor Tong first. Because uh, the Yenor Tong Echo Park Plastic Resources Recycling Center is one of the service units of Yenor Tong, which is uh, one of the largest charitable organization in Hong Kong. And it is registered in 1977. And it now has over 90 service units, such as education, medical services, and social service, and etc. And by research taken in 2011, each Hong Kong resident generates 1.36 kilogram domestic waste per day, and around uh, 1,700 tons of plastic waste are dumped in the landfills, which is equal to 18.8% of total amounts of municipal solid waste. And here is a photo of our center. As you can see, there is a huge amount of plastic waste. Also, you can see that the plastic waste in our center will be sorted by different types and colors, like this. Uh, the light blue colors, uh, which is all is PET and some kinds of plastic will be belted into a cubic shape, uh, like this. And the major aims of the PRRC are first, to collect the local plastic waste, uh, second, to turn those waste into recyclable, valuable materials, third, to strengthen community participation and raise public awareness, just like what I'm doing now to promote plastic recycling and our center to, to you guys. And last, the, to create the jobs for the underprivileged. So, how do we collect the plastic waste? The PRRC will collect the local waste from our plastic acquisition partners. For instance, there are schools, uh, housing estates, hospitals, and etc. And now there are over 800 partners who promise to provide us plastic waste for free and we will provide them the logistic support. And besides, some of them even transport the uh, plastic waste to our center by themselves. So our uh, transport uh, logistic costs can be lowered. In PRRC, around six tons of plastic waste can be recycled per day. However, it's only a little of the total number of waste. It is only 0.35% of the total plastic waste we dumped to in the landfills. Now, a few questions first. Anyone here is doing the recycling job? Raise your hand. Good. And other than the drink bottles, have we ever tried putting anything else into the recycling bin? What will put? Plastic bags. Any others? What? A food container. And correct. And because there are so many things we can put into the recycling bin, but uh, some citizens told me that they only know that the drink bottle can be put into the recycling bin. And commonly, there are four types of plastics. Uh, for some products, there are triangular symbols at the bottom, indicating different types. And now I want to introduce you the seven types of plastics. The first one is named the PET, which is commonly used to make the drink bottle, containing water, juice, and soft drinks. And all these kind of drinks are called because the PET bottle can only tolerate 70 degrees Celsius. And for the PET, we will further soften them by colors, uh, transparent, light blue, and other colors such as green and brown. And the second one is named the HDPE. 
uh, where can you find these kind of bottles? Have seen this before? Yeah, yeah. The, these are the bottles for uh, detergent, body wash, and shampoos. And so you can always find these kinds of bottles in toilets and kitchens. And these bottles are non-transparent in color mostly. And anyone know why? Why do we need a non-transparent color for this kind of bottle? Contain with detergent? What? Yeah, because uh, uh, since the bottle are containing some chemicals, the non-transparent color can help avoiding sunlight and hence the quality of the product uh, will not be affected. And the third one is named PVC. It is commonly used to make the water pipes and packaging. So uh, Christmas is coming and you guys may uh, get many presents and remember, please remember to put this kind of package into the brown recycling bin. The fourth one is LDPE. Examples are plastic bags and some soft toys. And the fifth one is PP. It is used to make drink bottles and food containers. Uh, most of them are milky in color and with its heat tolerance up to 120 degrees Celsius, we can use it to contain some hot stuff and even put it into microwave or hot water. Like the shops selling herbal tea or uh, soybean milk, these kinds of drink can be kept in uh, PP bottles and be heated. And the sixth one is uh, named PX. Examples are some uh, disposable tableware, uh, CD cases, and some yogurt and ice cream containers. Uh, it is breakable, uh, like the CD cases. Uh, you, they will be break, they will be broken easily when if we drop them on the ground. And also, this type of plastic shows a white mark when folded. And the seventh one is other. For those we cannot uh, categorize into type one to six, we will put it in this category. Um, there are over 100 types of plastic in these categories. For example, uh, CDs and the cosmetic and drink bottles as shown here. Uh, this kind of cosmetic bottles is uh, like glass, but uh, actually it is uh, made of plastic. So, after understanding the seven types of plastics, uh, plastics, yes, what can we do for the environment protection? Have you ever heard about the free arts? Uh, it had been talked about in the previous video. We have uh, free arts that are the reduce, reuse, and recycle. And we always said that there is a frequency for these three R's. The first R, reduce. Uh, we should not. We should try not to generate any waste first. So, what can we do? <laughs> any idea? What can we do to reduce? Yes. And any other? What? Don't buy the product. <laughs> yes. Uh, for what? Yes, the production of plastic bags, yeah. Yes, we can use our own bags instead of plastic bags when buying things, and also we can use uh, reusable instead, instead of uh, disposable tableware when dining. And the next one is reuse. When we cannot avoid generating the plastic waste, we should think of ends as some ways to reuse them but not just throw them directly into the rubbish bin. And for instance, we can uh, wash the drink bottles and reuse them to contain uh, other drinks. And next, it comes to the recycling. When the plastic is being reused for several times and is broken, we have no way but to recycle them it by putting them into the recycling bins. In fact, uh, we can do something more in recycling the plastic bottles. 
Uh, will you guys do this four step uh, when you recycle a, a, a plastic bottle? Have you ever heard about it? There are four steps uh, when recycling a plastic bottle. The first step is to remove the cap, then empty and rinse the bottle, next remove the labels, and finally put all three parts into the brown recycling base. So, anyone can tell me why we need to separate the three parts? Different materials. Different materials, great. And one more reason. Uh, anyone, any more answer? What? Yeah. In fact, uh, the reason why we need to separate the free parts is because the free parts are made of different kind of plastics and one more reason is that they are of different colors. Uh, for, for the bottle cap, it is, uh, they are made of PP and for the bottle, they are made of PET, the first one, and or, or PP, the fifth one. And for the label, they are made of PET or PVC. With the different kinds of plastics and colors, uh, we need to separate them so that the later processing time can be reduced. And other than just increasing the number of plastic waste recycled, we also want to improve the quality of the plastic waste collected. And in our center, there are some kinds of uh, plastic waste co that cannot be recycled. And we always tell people not to put this stuff into our recycling bins. For example, those plastic contaminated by food residual, uh, clinical waste, chemicals, containers, um, plastic bags with aluminum coating, tunnel cartridges, uh, rubber and styrofoam. Uh, those are the plastics that we cannot be, uh, recycle. So next time when you put something into the brown recycling bin, please remember, don't put them in. Now, I want to tell you uh, what our center is doing now. There are four main areas in our center. Uh, the sorting area, the shredding area, the palletization area, and the storage. And you can see, these are the four areas in our center. And here is the recycling process. First, we will collect the plastic waste from our partners, which are located all around Hong Kong. Then the plastics will be transported to our center. When the plastic arrive our center, our workers will sort them manually by the different types and colors. After that, the single type of plastic will be put into the shredding machine and be broken into flakes. Later, the flakes will be put into a water tank uh, for a process called uh, separation by density. Since different types of plastics have different density, some plastic flakes will float and some will sink. And this process helps further separating the different types of plastics. And next, the flakes will be put into the machines for palletization, that they will be made into pellets. And finally, to recycle the plastics, the flakes and their pellets will be sold out to local companies. And here are some photos of the recycling process. Uh, from the first two photos, you can see that uh, our work is, in, uh, is doing some jobs in the sorting process. Th there is a sorting line, and there are some baskets uh, right there, and they will put, separate the different kind of plastics and put them into respective baskets. And later, we will put a single type of plastic into the shredding machine and break them into flakes like this. And later, some plastic, uh, for example, uh, some plastic bags that we won't put into the threading machine because uh, it will uh, affect our machine. So we will belt them in a cubic shape. And for this photo, you can see that uh, our workers is working around the water tank. It is a, a 
water tank for the separation by density to separate the different types of plastics. And our workers will use some tools to collect the flakes. And here, uh, these are the recycled plastic products, the flakes and the pellets. Uh, with the sorting process done manually in our center, the recycled plastic products shown is with a single is it was a single type, and is this kind of recycled plastic products can be sold with a higher price than the mixed. It. So, what are the use of these recycled plastic products? And we can all these can be used it as the materials of various kinds of products and have a new life. For example, uh, they can be used to make synthetic fiber for the jacket. And guess how many bottles we needed for our jacket? Do you know? Have you ever heard about a brand? Start with N. Uh, a line of their product is used a, a wasted drink bottle to make it some sports shoes, the sport uh, clothes, sorry. Nike. Yeah, it's Nike. Uh, do you know which kind of plastic they use? Type one to seven, guess. Guess the number, just guess. One. No, not three. One. I have heard some think someone said one. Yes, we, we can use the first one, the PET to make the jacket. And guess how many bottles we need? 100, uh, too, too many. 10, too many. One is too many. And we only need seven bottles, seven PET bottles to make one jacket. Also, by adding into original materials, they can be used to make flower pots and packing materials and etc. In order to demonstrate the plastic waste can be recycled and made into some other products, our center collected the local plastic waste and made some recycled plastic stationery, stationeries. And here is the PP plastic highlighter and the PET plastic ball pen. Again, guess which kind of uh, plastic we needed for a ball pen? For a ball pen? One, yes. And um, how sorry, uh, how many I should ask <laughs> how many bottles we needed? One is uh, we uh, we need less. How? Oh. Also we again we need less. All, uh, actually we only need one third of a bottle to make one stationery. Just one third. So a uh, thing. How, how it calls for a stationery and how it's needed for waste. Other than the recycling process, we also organized some promotions and events so that people can know more about the plastic recycling. As shown in photos here, we have held some booths in the Hong Kong Rainbow Carnival and also in the Hong Kong Autumn Festival event promoting the free arts. Uh, did anyone go to the Victoria Park during the Mid-Autumn Festival? Remember this moon? Uh, this is a moon which is made by a huge number of bottles and after the exhibition, the bottles were transported to our center for recycling. And besides, we invite different kinds of people such as students, our residents and volunteers to come and visit our center so that they can know more about plastic recycling in our center. Moreover, we have a working experience scheme that our students are welcome to come and experience the shopping job in our center. After joining the working experience scheme, the students told me that they are amazed by the huge amount of plastic waste Hong Kong people is generating. And they will they said that they will bring their own bottles instead of buying drinks in the convenience shops. And next, uh, 
uh, we have held some activities with their secondary students, like the race on plastic separation. Also, in this activity, uh, students are required to do some creativity work and debate. Uh, through the games, they can learn more about plastic recycling. And here are some photos that people promised to do the recycling job. Uh, we take this photo from our event to collect, that the event is to collect the plastic waste in the housing estate from the residents. And that is what our center aim at, to strengthen the community participation and raise public awareness. So, that's all for my sharing today, and it comes to